cars were no longer young by the middle 20s. People had had cars, well, advanced people had had cars from the 1890s, but uh, most people who had carriages had got at least one working car by 1910. Racing, it was in its youth, it was a modern new sport, it was a growing sport, it was an, um, a cross-class sport, which I think is quite an interesting phenomenon. Uh, because most of their sport shooting, hunting and so on had been very country people, uh, upper classes. But racing wasn't like that. Racing, I felt, was a statement of the 20th century that we wouldn't have seen uh, at the beginning of the series. I suppose it's a bit of a, a tip of the cap to the modern age, you know, and the fact that, again, this is what's happening. The world is changing, developing at a very fast pace. I mean, a lot of pilots from the First World War who just wanted an adrenaline rush, and they here they were in the 1920s, and um, it really was a great age of mot motor cars. I mean, for the start of Downton Abbey, you had a, we had a Renault as the family car, which went 15 miles an hour, if you're lucky, and now we've got cars going 60, 70 miles an hour. Brooklands was the centre of racing in England at that time, and by 1925 had been going uh, for some while. It's set in Brooklands, which is another racetrack, and there is a tiny part of that that's still usable, but only a tiny part, so we had to come here. Uh, it's a pity we can't actually say that it's Goodwood as well, because I kind of think it'd be nice to give it that recognition. Most modern motor circuits have runoffs, and uh, obviously have, have got every health and safety issue there is, and we had to find one that uh, really matched the earlier days of motor racing. We looked at some other tracks, and it was amazing how many others were just completely not doable because there were just too many modernisation areas, too many chicanes, too many, you know, lines, you know. Um, but here, it, it's sort of, it's a question of working with the director and the designer and us sort of saying, look, we can't look, we can't look there. We can't look there, you know, and that's why if you see, we've, we've actually put up marquees and that is purely there to stop seeing modern things behind them. Racetracks and things in those were much more informal than ours. I mean, the endless safety barriers and advertisements and all of this was not even in its infancy, really. I mean, you just sort of took a picnic basket and you sat by the edge of the track and had a lovely time, you know, eating your sarnies. With all the oil cans and the wrenches, there is this table laid with groaning with crab and lobster and cherries and strawberries it's, and champagne. I mean, it's completely absurd. But, and being served by three servants all in their finery. So it's a real culmination of a story of just really reaching its peak here. Come on, Talbot! I don't think you can shout that. Isn't Talbot the name of a car? Well, I can't shout, come on, Henry. They might all be called Henry. Oh, my God, here they are. You look at some of the old Pathé news and people are standing right next to the track and can't how they ever survived, you know, and uh, uh, there's no barriers, there's a few straw bales now and then, which must have done nothing for health and safety. It does go slightly wrong for my character in so much as the car overturning, bursting into flames could be deemed that that is going wrong. Get him out of there! <laughs> the alternative to building our own car to blow up, um, uh, given that these cars are uh, they're worth millions of pounds, so the, 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 we had to uh, we had to have one constructed. Uh, Michael Geary had a, a chassis of, of it wasn't a Bentley, but actually it looked like a Bentley. We added Michael added to that, and we decided that you know the car would be upside down, the tyres would be over. So you'll see almost a silhouette through the flames of, of, of the crash. It was really effective, you know, the um, sh quite shocking to be honest. Car upturned in the trees, on fire. I'm afraid it's Charlie Rogers. It's definitely the biggest thing we've ever tried to do, and it's the same with Downton. Each year we try and get bigger and better, and uh, I think this year we've definitely surpassed ourselves. The level of detail that um, David Evans, our director, and David Stafford, the first AD, have gone into for the planning of this is unlike anything we've ever done. It's, it's, it's groundbreaking. Every single person involved has gone out of their way to not leave anything um, unturned. 
once we get the script, we get to start the research and we're contacting brands and uh, people that you know have relatives that raced or might have known people or collectors. And that's really fun, like talking to those people, getting the insider kind of stories. And it might not seem like it, but they're all kind of noted within what we've done. Yeah, we can't afford to have signs that weren't there at the time. Um, and they can be tiny logos sometimes. You know, yesterday we had a no smoking sign that was creeping in. <laughs> Astonishingly, in the photographs from the 20s, people in the pits areas with cars ticking over had their cigarettes in their mouths. We've thrown the toys at it, so we've got four cameras, um, got the cranes, got the Russian arms, got the lightning vehicles, the track, you know, so you, you essentially just go, right, what can we throw at it to make it efficient, and make it quick and fast? It, it's like a dance. You choreograph it in the same way you would have dance. So again, you know, everything's been storyboarded, broken down, so we know exactly each corner where each car is. Car number six, driven by Sir Patrick Axford, has withdrawn with what looks like radiator trouble. And, oh dear, it looks like Sir Patrick has blown a gasket too. We've got 13 cars at the moment. Uh, we've got everything from Bugattis and Rileys and Newtons and three wonderful Bentleys, um, one of them which uh, won the first Le Mans. Uh, no, I mean, they're, they're wonderful, they're beautiful beasts. Uh, obviously, I love the, uh, the 1926 Le Mans winner, I think it is, the Bentley, the green one. There's also a beautiful kind of white Bentley as well, which, yeah, I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind driving home in that one. <laughs> the, the Bentley number eight, it's beautiful. It's in really good condition as well. Yeah, it's a stunning car. I know that the, the Le Mans winning Bentley is worth in excess, I think it's four million pounds. So yeah, I wouldn't want to prang it. <laughs> what we, we found very early on is we didn't want to go stunt drivers, because you put a stunt driver in one of those cars, he's going to break it because he doesn't know how to drive it. So most of them are owner drivers, the owners of the cars are driving their cars, which just makes complete sense. The owners know each individual car and I think that was the key to it all, is, is to, you know, it's no good putting somebody in who just doesn't know the car. They're not like a, the cars of today where you can get in any car and just drive it. They've, got, they've got, almost got characters themselves. The, the clutch, the accelerator and the brake are in the, slightly the wrong order. So once you get going, you're all right. But it's absolutely delight, they're beautiful cars. There's no power steering right now, they're really heavy. It's like, you know, you really have to battle it a bit when you're, uh, when you're trying to turn the car and obviously it doesn't have the same kind of turning circles as, as the modern as the modern day car where you can literally just operate it quite simply. I don't think it's like pranging your old rust bucket. I think that this beautiful old loved car that has clearly been loved through generations, in my ownership, I, I'd be a bit nervous. Before I started this show, I always imagined that I'd have a classic car, and then I haven't driven them for six years. I've got that out of my system, so <laughs> thankfully I saved myself probably a wedge load of cash. It's interesting trying to figure out how to drive a 1920s car, and then having to drive a 1920 car with Maggie Smith in the back, it's a very different ordeal. The price of the car goes up exponentially once she's sat in. I think they need such a huge amount of upkeep and continual running and love that I think it would be wasted on someone like me. Um, and one of the great things about, about these guys who, who do, you know, they put their cars up to be in period films, etc., etc., and they race them occasionally, is that they know they can take these engines apart. They know what they're doing. And that is something that I didn't pick up from my father. Well, I always love to see them. I mean, everybody likes them. So they are, uh, you know, works of art. And uh, it brings too many people nice memories. So I think it will be very exciting you know, to see, even though if it is a few seconds of it in downtown Abbey, especially. So, uh, so famous and so well watched by millions of people, I understand. I think for the actress, it was the star attraction of, of, of the series, you know. They really do, so many of them have come up and said, can I have a picture with the car? Is it your car, you know? Um, how did you come by it? They just want to know the history of the car and they are just so thrilled to be associated with it. It's just been a blast and, and a real eye-opener. Everyone focused, enjoying themselves, trying to work hard, 
get the best possible outcome within everyone's ability and it's, it's been a really, really good time. It's something for everyone. You've got the beautiful dresses, you know, then you've got the amazing cars, and you've got this amazing location. So I, I think it's a winner for everyone. Walking out, being applauded, again, getting into, running across and getting into a car, it is quite exciting. It is sort of schoolboy stuff. Here they come. Here they come. It's one of Bertie's lines. Look at that. something gallant and daring in it, even I can see that. This is by far our biggest ever set piece in, you know, scale, in terms of cost, um, in terms of planning. Um, yeah, we're, you know, final season, we're gonna go out with a bang. <laughs>